Coffee shops back, alright! Hi everybody, welcome back to Bentley House. I'm Aira, and today we're working on the abandoned coffee shop. It's been so ignored, and I know it's some of you guys' favorite project, so I'm glad to be working on it again. The last thing we made was the bistro table. All the large pieces of the coffee shop have already been made, so the next thing we need to do is work on the minute details. So what I've decided to do is to focus on one small area of the coffee shop, make the small miniatures and the tiny details that go in that area, and just go section by section until the project is complete. Because I've decided to do it this way, each tutorial from now on on the coffee shop will probably have several mini tutorials within the video. So even if you're not sure if the thing on the title card is what you want to make, there might be other things in that video that interest you. So make sure you are subscribed, have the notification bell on, so you can check them all out when I upload. So the first section we're going to be working on is this little around the sink, around the sink area and underneath. Can you see? I'll give you a closer up view, but I wanted to focus on the sink area, this over here, and then we'll move on to this side of the counter and then over to the other side of the project. So I really hope you guys enjoy these, I don't know, four or five tutorials, little mini tutorials, and let's get started. Also, if you're new to my channel and you have no idea what I'm talking about, I'll put the abandoned coffee shop playlist in the iCard above. I can never get which side it's supposed to be on. Uh, so make sure you check it out. It has a little eye in the circle and you can watch from beginning to end the creation of this abandoned coffee shop. So the first thing I'm going to do is get out all my polymer clay stuff and I'm going to make some sponges for the sink. This is a mat I got for Christmas. It's a polymer clay mat so I thought I'd try it out. I'm going to be grabbing some yellow and some green because I'm making one of those scotch bright sponges um, and they're yellow and green. I'm going to use my clay roller to roll out the green on the lowest setting or the skinniest setting and that is way too much green but that's okay I'm going to use it in the future and I'm going to roll out the yellow on my thickest setting. When that's done I'm going to take a blade and cut it into little rectangles about the size of what I think a sponge would be. I think these are about a quarter inch by three eighths inch. Now I'm going to be using this like spiky tool, I don't know what else to call it, to make little holes to make it look like a sponge. I'm going to do this on the top and bottom and all the sides of the little sponges. I ended up making three because I didn't know how, which, what I was going to want it to look like and I just kind of bent them up a little bit because this is going to be an old sponge. I want it to look very worn and I don't know about you but my sponges all end up not rectangle anymore <laughs> after a lot of use. Now I'm taking the rest of the green clay. I'm going to roll it out into a snake and then flatten it. This is going to make more of a flattened bottle shape and so I was just using a pile of post-its to be my flattening tool. And I'm going to cut it about the height that I want it to be. This bottle is just a little less than an inch. And then I'm going to take a rounded sculpting tool to push in the sides to give it an hourglass shape. And I ended up looking up a picture of the bottle that I wanted so that I could get as accurate as possible. Then I took my same pile of post-its and flattened the bottom because I knew I wanted to make sure that it stood up on the countertop. And I rolled out a smaller snake to make a top for the bottle. Now I'm going to try out my baking mat, which worked amazing. Now I don't want my soap bottle to be green, so I'm going to be making a mold of it with this mold putty. It's amazing, super marvioso. Um, I'm going to be using some round clay cutters, and these are the previous molds that I have made. One of them I'm going to be using today is a milk jug. So just like I made the soap bottle that I just showed you, in the past I made this milk jug. I just sculpted it how I wanted it to look, and then I made a mold of it so that I could make it out of a different material. So I'm going to show you how it fits in here. I'm going to be making this out of hot glue. I have found that it gives it this very, um, uh, like, 
foggy, translucent look that you get in milk jugs as opposed to using resin where it is very see-through. I want kind of that foggy look to the plastic. So I'm going to show you how I use this mold and then I'm going to show you how I make the mold for the soap bottle. I'm just going to use my hot glue gun and I'm going to fill up both sides of the mold and I'm just going to fill it a little bit fuller than flat. So it just has a little bit of a dome on it so that I know that the glue will touch each other whenever I put the mold together. So once I have both sides of the mold full of hot glue, I am going to put it together. And you will see on the side of the mold that I have a little V shape, and that lets me know that the two sides are put together correctly, and I have a little spout on the side that lets any extra hot glue come out. When I show you how I make the mold for the soap bottle, I'll show you how I cut that. Once I can no longer feel the heat through the side of the mold, I'm going to go ahead and pull it apart and you can see my little hot glue um, milk jug in there. Now this does take a little bit of practice. It can fail really easily because bubbles can get into the hot glue, um, but you just kind of have to play around with it if you want to try this technique. It took me a while to figure out the best way to get the hot glue into the mold and I will find that it is easier with larger molds like the milk jug and it can be a little bit more difficult with smaller molds like the soap bottle which you will see. Once I have it out I'm just going to take off any extra hot glue. It will kind of spread out in the mold and you have to take it off. You can use the nozzle of the hot glue gun to lay down some of the hot glue that's sticking out, but it will make it shiny. I just use the side of the mold I just made to mat down the glue again. You can see that my mold was a little bit crooked, but um, you know, you because it's hot glue and it's a little bit cheaper than resin, you can do them over and over again until you get it right. Now that these pieces are baked, I can show you how I make a mold in the first place. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out one of my circle cutters and I'm going to choose one that is big enough for my piece to fit into. You don't have to do this this way, it just helps me keep my molds nice and cylindrical. Now I'm going to take equal parts of both of the putties and you need to follow instructions whichever kind of um, mold putty material that you get. This one says to mix them in equal parts so I just pull out a chunk of each however much I think I need and I actually should have done a little bit more here because this first mold is a little bit shallow but once I get it into my circle cutter I'm going to tamp it down with some kind of tool and this is to get it to make sure that it's up against the sides. Then I'm going to take my um, my soap bottle form that I just created and I'm going to stick it in there. Now this says to wait for it to dry for or cure for about 15 minutes. You'll know when it's completely cured when you can no longer put a fingernail mark into the bottom. Once that's done I'm going to pop it out of there and you are going to want to add some kind of oil to the top layer of um, your mold there because when we put the next piece on this stuff will stick to itself like crazy. So I'm putting a little bit of oil to create a barrier so that my next piece does not stick. And you can, use, you can use baby oil. I only had olive oil, so that's what I used. Probably shouldn't use food stuff, but I did. <laughs> so I'm going to put it back into my mold and lift it up a little bit so that it's high enough so that I can add the upper part of the mold onto this piece. I'm going to put little bits at a time so I make sure that it gets all the way to the bottom and there's not a lot of bubbles forming, but this is going to be the top half of my soap bottle mold. I'm just going to add layer by layer and make sure that it goes all the way up and over the bottle top. Now I could have left the bottle top off of the polymer clay form that I created and you will see it's really hard to get hot glue into those little bitty details. It's a little bit better for larger sections but if you do want to make a resin piece in the future it will be nice to have that bottle cap detail. So now once it's all in there, I'm going to flip it over, put it on my mat and just press with my finger and this will allow the bottom half that I just formed to create a flat surface and then I'm going to just 
inscribe with my exacto knife really shallowly the word soap and this helps me know um, that I'm grabbing the correct form because it is hard sometimes to see what form it is just by looking on the inside. Once it's dried for another 15 minutes I'm gonna pop the whole thing out of my circle cutter and I'm gonna go ahead and mark my V on the line where I have to separate it. This is so I know exactly how to put it back together again. You will see that it is very sticky even though I applied the oil it is sticking to itself like crazy. So if you do not do the oil step you will not get your piece apart again. So now you can see I have the bottom piece of my soap bottle mold and I'm gonna pull this out and I have my top piece. It should be a little bit more even. I should have had a um, deeper bottom piece, but it still works in the end. Now I'm gonna cut my channel like you saw in the first one. This is gonna help any extra hot glue that I don't want to come out of the side. If you're doing resin, this may not be a step you want to do. I'm not sure, I haven't tried resin yet. So now I'm going to fill up both sides with my hot glue gun. I'm going to start with the nozzle deep inside the mold so that there's as few bubbles as possible. Once I can no longer feel the heat through the sides again, just like the milk bottle, I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out and I should have a kind of a foggy but clear plastic piece for my soap bottle. And you do kind of have to wiggle it back and forth to get it out. As you can see, it doesn't really get into that really tiny top piece. That's why I said you could leave it off, but if you do want to have a resin mold in the future, you might want to add it. So these are my pieces side by side, one in polymer clay and one in the hot glue. Now I did most of this off camera, so I'm sorry you can't see, but I just cut little tiny bits of mat board and added it to the top to make it look like the top of a soap bottle and they're just glued on top of each other. One is like a little circle and one is like a really tiny rectangle um, glued uh, vertically. Now I'm going to use some UV resin. This was kind of like a last minute thought. I wanted to know if it would work because the hot glue form is just a little bit bumpy. I wanted to see if I could add a thin layer of UV resin on the outside of the glue bottle to see what I could create. I was a little worried because when you cure UV resin, it can get really hot and I didn't know if it would melt the hot glue. But this actually worked perfectly. I just put like a little, like two drops maybe of UV resin on the face of the hot glue and then I spread it around so it's basically just like a thin layer of resin on the top. I didn't go on to the sides and then I took my UV resin light and I cured the resin and it did a really great job. So I went ahead and did all the sides of the bottle. I did the front, the back, and then the sides each one at a time so that I didn't have a resin mess. And in the end, I really like how it looked. Now you might be saying, why don't you just do it in resin to begin with? Well, I'm not sure my UV light would get all the way to the bottom of my soap mold. So I'm not sure I can do that out of UV resin. Plus UV resin is pretty expensive and uh, hot glue is relatively inexpensive in comparison, so you can make most of this out of hot glue and just use a few drops of UV resin. So after that, I have my, oh, and I wanted to show you, these were my first practices with the hot glue. So if you're getting frustrated, keep going. You will get a technique down and you will eventually get a great mold. It does take a little bit of practice. So now I printed off some labels, one for my milk jug and one for my soap bottle. And I'm just gonna cut those out and glue those on. And why is my X-Acto so dusty? I don't know. <laughs> I do think it's rather funny that I'm gluing something on to glue. The reason I don't worry about my milk jug too much as far as the handle goes, because I have tried to cut that out before, um, is because I am going to be putting it upside down in the trash can, and so I'm not too worried about the top of it because you won't actually see it. So here it is with the pieces glued on, and it does give it that little bit of realism to have a small label. I'm going to now make a garbage can 
I am using my favorite mat board for this and I cut out four pieces and I tapered two of them just slightly inward so it would have a little bit of a taper to it like most garbage cans do um, and then I just put it once I had all the four walls together I put it back on top of the cardboard and then just traced out a bottom piece and then glued it back on you of course can pick out whatever trash can shape you want and then make it out of mat board so now that I have this shape, I'm going to be using some wood filler just to make the side edges just a little bit smoother. It is difficult to get mat board absolutely perfect, and so the wood filler definitely helps out. After I have all the edges filled in and um, I'm happy with the smoothness of the piece, you can always sand it as well. I'm going to take some wood glue because I do want this to look like either a metal or a plastic piece. Um, remember this project is all about textures and so I need to make sure that my textures are on point and I really wanted this to be a smooth surface. So the um, wood glue for some reason really helps with this. I don't know the reason why, but it does. Now I'm going to take whatever color I want to be my trash can. I want it to be rather bland looking, so I'm using a gray. And then finally, to again help with the texture, I want it to have just a little bit of shine. So I'm using Matte Mod Podge because Matte Mod Podge does have a tiny bit of shine. You use Shiny Mod Podge. Blah, 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 blah. I can't say it. If you use Shiny Mod Podge, uh, it does have a lot of shine, so I'm just using the matte. To make the liner for the trash can, I'm using an actual trash bag, and I cut a square out of one that I found in the garage. So I'm sure my husband's gonna love that when he finds that. <laughs> Sorry! To install the trash bag, I'm just gonna put some hot glue in the bottom and about halfway up the walls, and I'm just going to push it in with my thumb and make sure that it touches the hot glue. Be sure you don't burn yourself doing this because it can get rather hot, but I wanna make sure that it's in there pretty tight because I'm gonna be pulling on the edges to make sure it looks realistic. Now I'm gonna cut closely to the edges. This is just depends on how far you want the trash bag to go down the side. If you want it to have a cleaner look, you can roll it up underneath itself to make it look like it's um, folded neatly over the edge. But because I want this to look like um, it's pretty messed up, I'm not worrying about that. I'm using the nib of the hot glue gun to melt the plastic bag a little bit and then pull it down the sides. This is gonna help the look of it seeming like it's been in an abandoned place for a long time. There's been stuff falling from the ceiling and it's gonna be ripping and tearing at the garbage bag. Once I'm happy with that, I'm just gonna take some a little bit of hot glue, put it underneath the um, trash bag, and then push it down into the hot glue so that it is sturdy and um, not gonna come undone. This is also gonna give it a little bit of weight and gravity so that it definitely looks like it's been there for years. This is just a quick and easy little trash can, but I really like how it turned out. So now I'm going to be gluing some things in. It's really, really scary. Uh, I don't know if um, you're a miniaturist, if you're watching this, I have glue anxiety. Um, everyone start using the hashtag glue anxiety because I was the first one to use it. I was really surprised. But I need to glue things in so that I can age around them. And if I'm always moving them, is there's a possibility that it may not always um, line up when I put my miniatures in if they move. So to do this, I really wanted to start gluing things in, which is really scary. So this is the setup that I have. I was pretty happy with it, so now I'm gonna take each individual piece and put some glue on it. These are the boxes I made in last week's tutorial. So that's kind of another mini tutorial smushed in here even though it had its own video. So I will put um, the link in the iCard for that if you missed that one. They were really fun to make and everybody's got boxes. You know, there's boxes all over my house. Um, I've had lots of comments of people saying, oh yeah, you, uh, you totally ripped off my boxes from my garage. <laughs> so. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and fill this trash can because um, my trash can is always full, so probably whoever abandoned this place left the trash. I'm just going to take some paper. This is some, like a wrapper from my afternoon uh, Dove chocolate, and I'm going to put that in there too. Make sure whatever you put in there is clean, doesn't have food because it could rot and mold, so just be careful of that. 
and I'm gonna put my milk jug in there upside down. I am also going to add a little plant before I glue it all together because most likely it held moisture, possibly even some coffee grounds, which would be a great atmosphere for something to grow. And then of course I'm gonna use my typical watered down black and brown paint to age the trash can before I glue it into its spot. Ooh, I can take a breath. Man, this video is long, but it has been going by fast. <laughs> I hope you guys are enjoying it. I hope you're still with me. I hope you'll make one of these items. So now that I have it all aged and put together, I've decided I'm gonna put it a little bit catty corner underneath the edge. I figured that would be a great place for someone who's making coffee to just dump some grounds in the trash. Now I have this mop, I did not make this mop, I got it in one of my grab bags. Um, it is a little bit too short, so I decided to elongate the handle before I put it into the project. Uh, I'm sorry, I wanna be able to make everything and show you how I make it, but there is gonna be a point to where I'm just gonna use some miniatures that I've already collected to put into the coffee shop. So what I did for this is I added an extra dowel and then I just wrapped a thin sheet of paper around kind of like a Band-Aid and uh, once I was happy with the length, I added a little bit of glue, that's that white mark on the bottom. I dipped the strings that made up the mop into a water, uh, it was water mixed with paint, mixed with just the tiniest drop of glue, and then I just put it along the bottom and spread out the um, mop bits with my finger, and I really love how it turned out. It does, it looks like a mop that someone just like slung into the corner and it's been soaking up water for years. And this is where gluing things in is really going to help me create that effect that these items have just been with each other for years and years and years. Now I'm gonna glue my coffee machine in. I haven't before, but there was this little plug here and so I could never commit to plugging or gluing my coffee pot there because I didn't wanna lose that detail. So I ended up just ripping it off the wall and I'm going to reinstall it somewhere else because I do believe this is the best spot for the coffee maker. Now I do have this little toaster guy. This is a mass made miniature. It's pretty cool. It actually even has like a string inside, not a string, a spring inside of it. And um, it comes with these little plastic pieces of toast. It's a pretty cool little miniature, but it I bought it specifically for the abandoned coffee shop. So I'm using my regular mixture of paint, sand, and uh, glue to create some rust effects and I'm just gonna put some rust around the edges and I'm gonna do the same thing for this little um, coffee mug stand which is going to go in the corner. Here's where I reinstalled that um, plug piece and eventually I think I will plug the toaster into it even though I don't glue the toaster in this video. So I've decided the mug stand's going to go over here by the sink because it will be close to the coffee maker and near the sink so once, you know, whoever had this shop um, is done cleaning the mugs, they can put it up on the stand. I want to put the toaster there. Like I said, I'm not going to glue it in this time because when I do the side um, area, I want to be able to move it. This is another um, mass made miniature, I think. Um, it, I just had it from before, I did not make it. But I'm going to age it into my project. It had two little towels on it. They were removable, which was nice because I could take it off, kind of pull at the strings, rip up the fabric, and then go ahead and add some more watered down paint to it to give it that grunged up look. I'm gonna do that before I install it, but then I'm going to go back and re-age it again once it's installed into the project. So for the other towel that's not on the rack, because it came with two, I'm going to take it and I'm going to push it into a water substance mixed with glue and then just kind of form it into the shape that I want. And I know I want it hanging off the side of the counter. So I'm going to put that in place and then hold it in place the best I can. Uh, this is my son's pet rock and it just happened to be on my desk because his eyeball fell off and he wanted me to fix it. So it's gonna help me hold it in place until it's dry. Now I'm gonna take my soap bottle and I'm going to glue it in place. I haven't aged these yet. I'm gonna do it once it's glued in place because they're so tiny and so delicate. 
Once they're in place, I'm going to use my same watered down black and brown paint to age them once again. And anywhere it touches the countertop, I want to make sure that I am um, making a correlation there. Making sure it looks like these pieces have been sitting on these surfaces for years and the water has pooled and created stains. And that's how you really get a great aged effect is just making sure that you are consistent with items being near each other for a long period of time. So that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed these little mini tutorials and all the aging. That is, of course, my favorite part. If you are not yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can keep up with the things that I'm doing. Please keep in mind that we are still doing dollhouses for kids battling cancer. I will leave a link to that video in the description box below if you're interested in checking out how you can help that organization. I hope you guys have an amazing week and I will see you in the next video. Bye. So my sisters were making fun of my little bye, bye, however I do it, bye, at the end of my video. So let me know, should I change it up? Something more theatrical, something more interesting at the end of the video, the very last five seconds of the video. Bye. Bye. Goodbye.